How's everybody doing? So this is a project I've been working on pretty much the past two or three years, probably four, can't even keep track anymore. But my main project uh, I've been working on is my own uh, BMS that I'm calling the MBMS. And essentially I've designed a system that has a separate discharge um, port and charge port. So let's say you have um, a load running on here and you have your solar coming here and you have let's say your pack gets full it charges up and for some reason you set your parameter incorrectly on your charge controller uh, and you over voltage. Well this will shut off but you're still able to discharge your load this won't completely shut off your system uh, compared to other systems where your charge and discharge ports are the same so yes you still be able to in the other systems your since your battery is connected to the solar and your load as well technically you could the solar charge controller can still provide your loads but it's not really stable so but this this is the system I've designed that I like and I've designed it in a way that allows me to modularize it so I can add more as I need without really affecting the system. I can pull a pack out and service it, put it back in, and the system won't know the difference. So here I bought a U two U rack and I've embedded my system in here. This is only a 640 watt hour pack, but um, eventually I will add more more capacity. But so if you can see here, one of the features I have is I have every cell monitored on here. Uh, this is an 8S pack. Um, I have a what is it? 16-bit ADC 8 channel so it's pretty good accuracy I even calibrated it using a two-point calibration it does a good job and if I'm able to zoom in here I have the pack voltage the current um, there's also a, a Hall effect current sensor on here and I do have even though it says SOC um, I am measuring um, I'm doing a, a rudimentary coulomb counter uh, and then resets at full pack voltage using uh, um, the predefined value you entered here. So, for example, this one I think it's a 25 amp hour. Uh, this is wrong right here. It needs to reset. I haven't charged it in a while. But um, so once the voltage hits the the max charge voltage that I've set on here, it'll reset to 25, and it starts discharging. It'll count. Um, which does a good job. I like it. And here I have a reset button in case this thing over voltages or over discharges. Um, when you're not around, so you can hit the reset button. It's a little finicky. I gotta fix the code. For some reason, it doesn't trigger properly. Um, the other way I normally trigger is I use a serial directly to the board and just software reset uh, via command. Um, so let's open it up. So here I have some, I think they're top band, um, lithium iron phosphate from battery hookup. And I've modeled and 3D printed this bracket that I've mounted. These are uh, made out of uh, a ASA, it's pretty sturdy, high temp. I've got some copper bus bars. And here is the project that I've been working on for the last three, four years. So it's a modular battery management system. In essence, each board, I have about three different boards. Two of the boards can be run on their own in another system or together. So I have the main, uh, what I'm calling the protection board. This board uh, allows me to connect directly to the battery. And I have the discharge path and the charge path. And down here, you can see I have a Hall Effect sensor. For current measurement 
this particular one is unfortunately out of stock like a lot of other parts uh, I have enough for my systems um, but I'm working on a newer system that is even more modular um, where the boards themselves will be modules and they will be soldered onto a motherboard and therefore let's say um, for example in a chip chores like we are now this current sensor I designed a system all around now I have to redesign because I can't get a hold of these but my, my newer version I will have this as a daughter board and it's a I find a different current sensor well I don't have to redesign the whole main board I have to just redesign the module for um, the current sensor and I usually what I'm doing is I'm making a a template footprint for each module so the current sensor will be probably I don't know um, 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters and that way I can and a a, a similar uh, hole pattern so that way I can just drop in replacement um, so I have a inline 150 amp fuse as a short circuit protection um, in case the FETs fail or something happens that that fuse and this is an I believe an automotive fuse is rated to I think 63 volts um, and it has a high surge current so it won't really there are some fuses that if you get incorrectly uh, in, if you buy the wrong fuse then you have a potential of uh, have a high surge current that the fuse will either explode or it'll arc over this one has a really high surge current I think it's uh, the parameter is labeled I score T I believe it, but it's designed to handle high surge so that shouldn't be a problem here and the next board is kind of hard to see I have this board so this one actually is what measures all the voltage cells so zoom in. so it comes in this harness here taps into all the cells and I have two ADCs they're the ADS 1119 from TI they're still available a little expensive but they do the job well so it's a four channel ADC and I use two of them and what I do in order to to measure um, the higher voltages I just have a resistor divider and then that's why I, I chose to go with the higher um, bit ADC because as I'm using a voltage divider step down the, the higher voltage cells um, then you lose resolution so the higher the hardware bit resolution the better and and this even has so the third board here this is actually the balance I call it the passive board so this is just a bleeder resistor uh, at first I had 10 ohms which had a good a good uh, uh, bleeding current to about or I should say balance current but I had issues with uh, thermals um, they would get really hot and they wouldn't the resistance will increase and wouldn't balance correctly so I switched it to 22 ohm and it's been doing pretty well I actually like the way it's working a um, little, little less current but it does a good job and I have it mounted to this front panel which acts like a heat sink so I have these two talking to each other via I to C and this sends current uh, measurement and uh, current and, and um, what else voltage of the pack I have some other parameters but I send it over to this one which then displays it on the screen and also let's say I have a, an issue where it over voltages the pack uh, or let's say one of the cells and you can see they're not perfectly balanced but they're they're within my tolerances I think I set it to 20 millivolt difference but I haven't like I said I haven't charged it or messed with this in like two weeks so it's not too bad but let's say when I'm charging and one of the packs hits uh, my my over voltage cell level which I set it to 3.75 if that one reaches any one of these cells reaches before the others do 
and uh, then this will send a command to the, B, the protection board to shut off the charging fit. And yeah, so I sent it sends a command to charging fit, which has been working great. I've had and just let me quickly show you my overall system here. My main system, I have six packs, variety of of, of amp hours in these packs, um, all working together, and um, for the past I don't know three years, and it's been working great. But this new, I'm trying to move away from 3D printed mounting and going into a stainless steel case. Um, so this is my I guess my proof of concept for a lithium iron phosphate enclosure. I know a lot of companies are coming out rack mount batteries, but I know I'm weird and I like doing things my own way. And I'm hoping this new BMS is, is something people would like. I'm not planning to sell this. I do not have time to really put together any, but everything I'm doing is open source. Schematics are online source codes online I did some instructions on how to set it up um, I'm hoping eventually at least for the next version which currently this one uses an Arduino Uno MCU works great um, but I'm planning to move over to the, the Pi Pico uh, more power um, smaller factor form factor um, so that one I'm planning to do a full-on document on how everything runs what what you got to do in order as far as first time connecting you got to initialize some parameters in a serial command um, like setting the pack voltage for max uh, your pack your your pack amp hours you got to calibrate the ADC to make sure that everything's accurate you got to zero out there's a lot of stuff um, but once you you set that you do it once everything works great uh, yeah, so uh, this is hopefully a new uh, series I'll be working on uh, as I work on to the new project, um, start posting more and more. But yeah, hope you like it.